Chronicles of Yarnia, the podcast from Montclair's local yarn store. I am Jen. Amanda. Kathleen. And as you can see, we have a very special guest here. Hi. <laughs> this is Amy from La Bienna May. And we are having a special non sequent no numbers episode, so I don't have to remember numbers, so it's awesome. But we are so thrilled to have Amy here. Um, she has brought her uh, samples from her new book, Neons and Neutrals. Some of which we're wearing. Some of which we're wearing. <laughs> yeah, we're all... Some of it. which we're trying really hard not to take off, mm-hmm. ever, <laughs> and just have for ever and ever. Um, but, so we have a special letter interview for you, mm-hmm. um, and we are on day two of our weekend of Amy events. Yep, we had a lovely meet and greet last night, and oh. a book preview for Neons and Neutrals. Saw a lot um, of you guys. It was super fun. Yeah, so super nice fun. to see everybody. It was mm-hmm. so fun. It was such a great experience. Yeah. And then this morning we already had a yarn tasting as well, where yeah. Amy got to help people try out new combinations that they haven't used before. And Including. Jen's still working on a swatch I'm here. I'm still working on one here. Yep. And I do love the idea of, um, you know, kind of putting these all together and making them into like a little blanket sampler or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. absolutely. That's going to be great. Well, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to join this podcast yeah. <laughs> and knit with you. It's been such a fun it. weekend. It's great. Yeah, it has been. Yeah. Um, so we pulled together a couple of questions because, um, you know, we've heard your backstory. You can find it everywhere. But you used to have three businesses. You had a yarn shop, restaurant cafe, and now the yarn dyeing business. So it's all under one one business. I right. think in mm-hmm. the beginning I started out as a cafe owner yarn shop. So mm-hmm. I always knew like having a cafe could be hard, having a yarn shop could be hard. You know, so I combined Let's the all two. Do both. <laughs> two hard well things. the thing is like I wanted to draw as many yeah. people mm-hmm. to my shop as mm-hmm. possible. And yeah. So we had a really popular brunch on the weekends and it would be really funny on the weekends people would come in for just the brunch. Mm-hmm. Because we, we made a really cute brunch and then they would look on the walls and they'd be like are those are those scarves? <laughs> you know, like it would be all these hanks hanging on the wall. We're like, no, it's yarn for knitting. And then we would take a bowl of yarn and put it on the table and be like, this is what you can do. And like they would pick it up and be like, what? Oh wait, mm-hmm. so it's like a Cracker Barrel and they have the little puzzlers <laughs> while you wait for your food. You've got yarn bowls. That's you've got, yeah, bowls. you've got yarn. And so oh my goodness, in so the fun. early years when I wasn't too busy, I would show them like, here, this is how Not you knit. You just just yeah. stick the needle in there and do it like this, and then they would try. And most people would be like, I'm interested in learning this, you know? That's so great. And so it's yeah. a great way for me to kind That's of make so new cool. knitters. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah, love wonderful. it. That's kind of brilliant. So <laughs> what spoke to you about dyeing that really kind of brought you to focus on the yarn dyeing aspect? Because that's what you're currently That's what I'm really well known for now. now. Yeah. Um, I had my cafe for seven years. And this was, I started when my son was 18 months old. Had my daughter in the second year of having the cafe, and oh, I went wow. seven. I rec- I relate <laughs> Can to you this? relate? Yeah, for sure. Right? Um, and I went seven years um, selling other people's yarn, and yeah. so I was bringing yarn brands from like I can see like Madeline Tosh. Yeah. I sold in my shop, mm-hmm. uh, Brooklyn Tweed, Quinson Co., Sweet Georgia, mm-hmm. all these like yarns that were popular in the U.S. but did not exist in France. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then after a while, I was like. Make my own yarn. You know, I started to really think about this. I always loved playing with color, and so I would play with color with other people's yarn to sell Mm -hmm. to my clients. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, maybe I can make my own colors, and so that's how I started Let Me in 2015. That's That's amazing. And maybe you could make your own. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe this will just you know pan out. So, you know, thinking about colors, um, what do you find inspiring when you're thinking about adding some new colors to your line? Well, I am really inspired by people that I meet, places that I travel to. Um, I definitely, in the time we've been with you, it's so wonderful. Amy is open to everything. She really experiences every minute, which I love. I, I feel like we have a, like a higher level of joy even having you. Aww. No, really, you are. Yes, you're very. You're just open to things, which is wonderful. The feeling so is good. mutual. I arrived here in Montclair, and I immediately was telling Kathleen when she was driving me around. I was like. 
this reminds me of my hometown. Yeah, Lake, which is Kansas. cool, which is really uh, nice. Yeah. And I woke up this morning and I took a beautiful photo. You guys can look on my social yes, media yeah. of the light yeah, outside of here. my hometown. Yeah. <laughs> the light here is so beautiful too. Is, and I was yeah. really inspired. So I get inspired by places that I travel to, but also fun things like um, I love Hayao uh, Miyazaki films. Oh, so yes. The Japanese yeah. anime that I showed to my children when they were growing up. And yeah. so I have a whole collection based around these movies. Right, so right. I'm yeah. doing a pair of you saw those yeah, they have been popular nonstop. Among us. <laughs> when you when you when the, in the uh, fall and winter. Uh, which one was it that I? Oh my goodness! I it was Cal and Sophie. Cal and Sophie, mm -hmm. and then you yes. had one in Cal Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That yeah. one, that film. Hal's yeah. Moving Castle. Yes. Yes. yes, you guys got sick of hearing about that all summer. <laughs> I, was I was obsessed. It was on repeat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so cool. But that, I mean, are you and you're still doing the Miyazaki ones? Yeah, I've That's got awesome. some other. I've got some colors in development right now. I'm just kind of what I do is often when I'm traveling. I will watch a Miyazaki film in the evening just mm -hmm. while I'm knitting because mm -hmm. I really enjoy the music, I enjoy the storylines, it's really relaxing actually. Mm -hmm. So if you've mm -hmm. never watched a Miyazaki film, mm -hmm. just look up the colorways and then you can, I mean they're yeah. all named after the characters from yeah. the movie. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. of my favorite films is Ponyo mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that was my son's favorite movie growing up. Uh -huh. So I have four colorways inspired mm -hmm. by this film so it's yeah. kind of interesting to see like how did this color happen? You watch the film and you, mm -hmm. you'll see. And the I, I, I did actually watch that after we started carrying <laughs> that color yeah. yeah, it was yeah. it was cool. That's one yeah. of my husband's favorites. Yeah, well. it's such a good a one. Huge Miyazaki mm -hmm. fan. I'm sorry, I'm sitting here oh. searching. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. We're very cozy. Here. We're all friends here. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh. good. It's good. Um, so really, how is your your kind of like your style of dyeing, your your style of building color? Um, has it evolved at all since you first started, or is it you know no. sprung fully formed from? No, we we really stuck to the same technique. Mm -hmm. um, we do kettle dyeing, so we we use pots, mm -hmm. um, my, which is very different from what we see a lot of. Yeah, people so do we here, see a lot right? of people yeah. dyeing in pans and mm -hmm. using steam cloths. And the reason why I didn't do that is because that takes you need a lot of space for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And when I started my first studio, it was really small. I mean, it was literally the size of this little room right here, and mm -hmm. I can only have four pots. Uh -huh. And so I needed to think. I I just was like. For me, that was not even an option. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about it for even two seconds. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, and so we learned, we developed all of our colors to be dyed inside these pots that are about this. They okay in the so beginning like they started like kind of. this big, <laughs> uh -huh. oh, wow. and then we grew, and so now they're kind of about this big. Mm -hmm. And I develop all my colors the way we do our pours and our immersions and our speckling mm -hmm. inside of a pot. Wow! So, oh, no, yeah, that's amazing. That's really yeah. cool, right? Yeah. That is so cool because a lot of times you do see like, you know, like kind of behind the scenes videos of, of other indie dyers and it is the pans and the speckles is just our yeah, specific like way. Really but kind of I never, I, even it. when you said, you know, you mentioned when we were talking earlier about the pots, I didn't think about the speckling in that. Yeah. yeah. That is amazing. We wow. have our own technique that we developed yeah. so mm -hmm. that we can do in the pot and mm -hmm. it's all reproducible. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Clearly. Your consistency yeah. is amazing. Yeah. We're, you no, know, you know, when we, Sometimes with um, you know with batch dye things, we really have to be careful when we're putting things out to yeah. make sure. But you really really can't tell the difference most of the time when we put a new batch. We try out. really hard. Thank you. No, we <laughs> can tell. We really yeah. can tell. And you're also my team. <laughs> Your team yeah, is definitely. absolutely amazing. They're so great. As well. yeah. like, they're, they're, you've, you've built a, a wonderful like mm -hmm. company full of wonderful folks to work with. Thank you. So yeah. like yeah. that's that's such a mm -hmm. you know kudos to you. And I also find it interesting that you. Your yarn bases and your mix of fibers, um, and you know, coming up and developing new yarns. How do you kind of go about that? Well, this was something that I kind of started right when the pandemic was happening. I was already mm -hmm. interested in mix and starting to learn how to make custom lens for bases. Mm -hmm. um, I knew I've always been a fan of woolly wools. For me, yeah, yeah. I love like. Jamesons and Smith, you know, Shetland two ply. Mm -hmm. I just love really natural wools. But when I started dyeing, I started dyeing on superwash bases just because I understood that this is what the market was wanting. It was, right? yeah, and it was a great way for me to learn to dye because dyeing on on superwash bases is different than dyeing on natural bases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just kind of got some textbooks, honestly, guys, and I wow. read about sheep. So I read about sheep and fiber oh. and their qualities, and I would just do some market research. I would buy some yarn and just be like, okay. And I would take yarns apart and see. I would knit with them, and then I would, like, kind of 
felt mm -hmm. them and see just how they would be. How do they react? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I really fell in love with the Cordell fiber. Yeah. So um, this was the yeah. first yarn that I spun was Cory Worsted, mm -hmm. um, which is the yarn that was used in my first book, Worsted. Mm -hmm. And I love a good heather yarn. I mean, who yeah. doesn't yeah. love a heather yeah, exactly. yarn, right? Yeah. I love so much uh, dimension. Jen so much is a huge fan of heather. <laughs> Obsessed. <laughs> So um, I read about the qualities of Gotland, yeah. mm -hmm. um, Gotland wool, and it kind of has the same qualities as mohair, like mm -hmm. to create the drapiness. Yeah. yeah, and so I just played around with the proportions, and that's how I kind of figured out the, the fibers to use for Cory Worsted, mm -hmm. which is Falkland Coradale and Gotland wool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And that's where I started from. Yeah. Do you spin yourself? Yes. No. Okay. Do I spin like, like hand spin? Yeah. Do you hand spin? Oh, no. Oh, interesting. No, no. So I was going to say, I, I did a deep dive into like fibers and sheep and breed specific things when I learned how when to spin. When you were spinning. Yeah, that's, I think that's right. I think I, that was my first initiation to fibers as I took a class from Elizabeth Johnston when I went to Shetland. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so she's like the hand spinner. Yeah. Mm. And I, while I was enjoying the class she was teaching the entire time, I just thought about like, <laughs> for, me it's, for me, it's not actually therapeutic. It actually kind of stressed me out because yeah. I'm kind of a perfectionist. And so I just really was like, okay, I'm deciding I'm not going to do spinning. I am appreciative and fascinated with mm -hmm. hand spun yarn. I love knitting with mm -hmm. it. I have friends who hand spin and they bring me their yarn and like give it to me as gifts and it's like oh, precious. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But for me, I'm just... I, I feel the knit. same way. I'd rather yeah. be knitting. Yeah. yeah. And and there's so much amazing yarn too. It's like I don't yeah. it's hard enough for me to find the time to knit with all the things that exist that I want to knit with. I remember that, when you were in my spindle class. I did your spindle class. Yeah, you're class like, twice. no. I'm like, I'm I'm glad other people enjoy this. This is wonderful. I'm gonna knit. Thank you. <laughs> you're like, I'll take the end result, please. I will, I will. <laughs> yeah, oh. so that was we talked about blending fibers to create a yarn, but your new book, the Ants of Neutrals. It's all about blending fibers after they're already yes. yarns. How did you make that late? Okay, so that was um, a concept that I've always kind of had in my mind since I was a yarn shop owner in France. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the yarn selection in France is completely different than what we have here in the United States. And at this time when I had a shop, there was no Ravelry. It was all knitting blogs. And mm -hmm. I was really into reading what the knitting community was happening on blogs and most mm -hmm. of them were in, a, in the United States uh -huh. and so I was all like access to the yarn. I'm like how do we create these weights and stuff and I don't have access to this yarn mm -hmm. so I would go to my local yarn shop and buy a couple skeins of yarn and like try to mix them together mm -hmm. and I actually had this first kind of initiation to this idea when I went shopping for a project and a woman at the Bon Marché who was a saleswoman there um, I had gotten the Rowan catalog and I was like, I want to mm -hmm. knit this. And she's like, oh, we don't actually have this yarn, but you could take this, you know, what at the time mm -hmm. was a fingering weight and a lace to create a DK. Uh -huh. And I looked at her, I go, what? And she's like, you hold these two together and you knit it and it'll create that yarn. And mm -hmm. it would just like, do mm -hmm. my <laughs> mind. And I was like, really? So I went home and like took my stash and I just started mixing all the bases together and being oh, like, wow. wow, look at all these great marls yeah. and colors that you could create. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I was just doing that for fun. And then I started to apply it when I was a yarn shop owner. I didn't always have the yarns that people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. I mean, it happens. Like there are some brands that we don't carry, and sometimes people will come in with, you know, brands that have been discontinued. Or yes, yeah, exactly. yes, absolutely. Yeah. We don't have anything that's going to have that exact quality, but we have these two things yes. or three things. Now the European designers, especially like yes. Scandinavian, are so popular. Yeah. We can't get those they've, yarns here. They've been doing that for a super long time. The yeah. Scandinavian mm -hmm. knitters have been mixing because they are all about like kind of the thin yarns. And mm -hmm. so you'll see through uh, Let Me Name I have a lot of thin yarns coming out yeah. of Helix and Helix and Mohair Silk. And mm -hmm. we have our Kumo base. Yeah. And they're all about building these right. strands together yeah. Yeah, 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 to make a weight. So I was, because that was happening in Europe, I was also paying attention to that too. And that mm -hmm. influenced me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and the new book is amazing. Mm -hmm. We've had a sneak preview. Um, you know, and, plus and actually, all of the garments. The garments are here. All so the garments we we're wearing. On here now. But yeah. it's so, it's such a great way to personalize something too, where, you know, nobody's ever going to have the exact yeah. same yeah. Mm -hmm. kind of experience making a garment or experience with that. And also like, you know, pulling all of these different colorways from your like wide range of colors and mm -hmm. seeing how they interplay. It's such a it's such a cool like kind of innovative idea and I feel like we saw this weekend especially a lot of like our customers and a lot of folks who came in and a lot of you guys yeah. um just kind of that same light go off and mm -hmm. yeah. I mean yeah. I'm super grateful for you for like bringing that. Well, you're wearing one of the pieces that I yeah. actually stash dive 
slash dove Love. to figure out the colors for the chunky stitch in this pattern. This is Zhao Mai so from my book Neons and Neutrals. Mm -hmm. And yes. it, it uses eight different strands of lace weight for Love the it. chunky it's stitch. And so it's pretty. Just, I'll take some yes. close-up pictures too. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Sure. And I'm going to be yeah. making a blog series to explain specifically how I did this. And I yeah. went shopping in my stash. So that's mm -hmm. exactly that's so what cool. I did. I remember I pulled out all of my mohair silk and all of it. And I zoned into this like kind of pink. So you can see it if mm -hmm. you're looking it up close. You can see that there's a pink tone, but there's only one yarn that's speckly in here. Mm -hmm. And it is a Qing Fiber um, Melted Baby Surrey. Uh -huh. And I was like, I love this one. It's, it had been in my stash for a long time, and I had just been looking at it being like, what am I going to use this for? Right. And it was this project oh, mm -hmm. that it's I used the it for. perfect way to show that off. Yeah, and I brought yeah. together other kinds of lace weight to Kind of put forward that pink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I actually picked one of the strands of lace, so it's the same color as the base color here, oh. so that I could uh -huh. get gauge. To tie in that, yeah, to yeah, tie it right. in and bring it together. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. I threw yellow in there because yellow is because my favorite yellow. color. <laughs> pink is my favorite color, and <laughs> right. yeah, so I was really happy with how this came out. It was it's amazing. It was a yeah. hectic 48 hours. I was sitting there like obsessed watching, being like, "No, that's one of the worst. And I would drop it and pick up other ones, but then I figured it out. So, yeah. You know. And is that kind of like your process in terms of like playing around with colors and design and whatnot is just to hands on? Absolutely. I like me to, I'm a very visual person. Yeah. Yeah. So, so another another project that I really enjoyed swatching for was the Videra jacket. So fun. By oh. Mesa Tamakawa. This is in my new book. And everybody has been putting this on. Mm -hmm. This weekend, on, uh, and there are the two versions, right? Yes. yes, and you're wearing the cropped version with the side pockets. But mm -hmm. I had initially started with a completely different palette, guys. Really? Yeah. Like I'm really? gonna, I'm actually gonna talk about this too and show mm -hmm. where I started and where I ended up. Mm -hmm. oh. And I just have to say, like, I know there's a constant battle with people who are saying, like, I always knit blue sweaters or I always knit, mm -hmm. you know, rust or caramel colored sweaters because that's what you love. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, just embrace that. Yeah. Don't, mm -hmm. don't yeah, shy don't. away from it. I really literally knit swatch for like four or five days trying to pull away from this palette, which is my palette. <laughs> right, exactly. It's to end up back at that palette <laughs> yeah. without even knowing it. So yeah. 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 If you have something you really love, it yeah. makes sense to embrace, like, embrace it. Go it. for it. Kathleen I, fully embraces her. Oh, yeah. I totally do. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking on our last episode too about how I had, it's been such a warm winter, I finally went through all of my, like pulled out all of the rest of my sweaters. And I had a I had a stack, and it really was a gradient from like light gold to like the deepest russet. And and I just you know if I'm gonna make something new, I want to find a little slot in there that I haven't quite hit. I feel like yeah. you need this. I feel like this. Yeah, this is, yeah this exactly. Is this, this is this could be what was missing. And like yeah. the gorgeous garter mm -hmm. and I mean, yellow brick road. Probably. Yes, Yellow right. Brick Road, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah definitely. Floor Morganite, Floor I do Morganite. love yeah. too, which I haven't used yet. And that's peach sweater. For yeah, the peach sweater. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but you were saying everybody has been wearing that. Everybody again. Mm -hmm. And everybody that puts it on, that all their friends, you can just see them like, <gasps> that looks so good on so you. Right? <laughs> and then everybody goes, it has pockets. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Pockets are so important. I love pockets. I think totally. It's a great, yes. totally. It's a great addition to knitwear, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. What is your favorite project of the book? I can't. That's like that. I know. Like, which one's like my favorite child? That's a mean no. question. I'm sorry. I love, I love them all because yeah. for neons and neutrals, I picked the designs yeah. mm -hmm. for the book. Worsted was different. I picked the designers, but then I let them design what they right. wanted. With with some some stipulation, like I said to Nancy, no brioche, and she was all like, "Oh yeah, no problem." And so she did intarsia cables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this this book, I knew exactly what the designs were going to be, uh -huh. and so I curated this collection. And so mm -hmm. each of them, it took a long time because I had to read through each proposal. Yeah. So I knew this oversized jacket was something that I would like to see on the market that we don't see very often. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then talking with the designer, she asked me, she's like, "Do you want pockets?" And I was like, "Yes, absolutely." And so th these these questions would always. come up sometimes yeah. the, the options like a lot of the designers said you want pockets and I was like I want pockets on all the garments mm -hmm. right. we can make it optional or not but I think it's great yeah. and another thing that I required was a certain size range mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. and to have it cropped in a regular like yes. because I, I like that. having that That's, option yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. And, and to be able to see both you know what yeah. I mean it's like you, we, you know we do with our sweater classes and everything you know customize to what you like but when you can see what the options look like on people that's even better and that's especially even, when yeah. you have interesting construction right like sometimes mm -hmm. it's not as easy to be like 
stop knitting at the length that you want, you're like, but how do I do that if it's a side to side sweater? Yeah, or if it's mm -hmm. yeah, something exactly, else. exactly. Yeah. Um, I, this is my favorite. I know. Which it is. Yeah. yeah. Surprise, this surprise. This is, is such a this, this sweater. This yeah. is the Confluence sweater by Caitlin Torsky. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it looks amazing on you. It really it's does. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. It looks this great. Is, um, what it's fingering with so it is a sock yarn, so a fingering weight plus a mohair in the body, oh. and then on the cuffs and the All collar, the she's cuffs, just right. held the yarn single to do these interesting oh, stripes. Right. It's so yeah. cool. And I had, and that's what I was telling Amy when you first came. I was like, when I saw this in the pattern and like the are in the pictures, I was like. Oh, that's cool. It's a normal sweater. Yeah. And then I saw it in real life, you and I was like, it oh, Yeah, it's completely it's so different seeing those because you see the subtlety of yes. the marling yeah. that's happened in this mm. sweater. Right. Mm. It's that's not really like a. It, it's not like a in-your-face marling. It's um, no, beautiful, it's really subtle, subtle, sophisticated marling, yeah. and I love these stripes. This is mm -hmm. so cool. I really like how this one came out. The designer picked the colors together. I kind of gave her some advice on the yarn that I would like to use. So mm -hmm. we wanted to use Twist Nouveau, which was our non-superwash fingering weight yarn mm. that just nice. joined our yarn family, and mm -hmm. then putting it with our mohair silk. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. it's yeah, beautiful. Really it's I have six sweaters on the needles, but this <laughs> might have to get it's in the queue. Be, yeah. Now you got now a little. Now we all have a little mental list in our head. <laughs> oh, yeah. of what what's so coming next. next? And what are yeah. you wearing? Yeah. What so are you wearing? I'm wearing Darda by mm -hmm. Inya Sang. Um, it's it is, so beautiful. Look at these cute little rough These yeah. shimmer. These I feel like this really is great. one that you had, like, I feel like some of them, you really have to see them in person to yeah. appreciate their beauty. This one, I feel like, has from the beginning. Yes. Oh, yeah. Any picture, it's, like, it's just amazing. It's so yeah. pretty. I'm really proud of this one because I always knew that I wanted my Darda to be the true, like, neons and neutrals. The yeah. first, yes, the, yeah. the first sample is very neutral, and mm -hmm. that really reflects the personality of the designer, if you knew, mm -hmm. and yes, that's her style, and it's, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I wanted to have a neutral base, and I was really always obsessed. I like brown, but I don't really wear brown, so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm gonna push myself to have it, make a brown sweater. Mm -hmm. And so I used Isayer, Twinny, uh, mm -hmm. and Mohair Silk for the main mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. And then I reached out to Geraldine from The Wandering Flock and mm -hmm. asked her to, it's like, would you make me a custom color? And she was like, oh my god, yes. <laughs> So we designed this color together, and this is on her mohair silk base, which is mm -hmm. really extra luxurious. I mean, mm -hmm. it's super great. That's been an amazing And day, this though. color yeah. is called Amy's Peaches and Dreams. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love that. I love name. Name. Yeah. The, the name's so really pretty. cute. We're going to yeah. be releasing this in March. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's great. I love that, and I love the I love the contrast of the neons and the neutrals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. especially yeah. if you're not a neon person, it's yeah. a way to wear a neon. And if yeah. you're not an actual person, it's a way to kind of like bring in the bring it in. Just bring a little pop in and give it a little try and see. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Definitely. So we only have a short amount of time, but we do mm -hmm. have one last question for you. Okay. That might also be a tricky one. So <laughs> Kathleen, do you want to ask? Um. Sure. I mean, is there a tip that you have for people that really want to try this, that haven't dipped their toe in, in the blending things before? Is there one thing you would say to really keep um, in mind? Can or? you grab those hats down? Yeah, like the, absolutely. Not, the, not that one, but the okay. streets, oh, the, the, yeah. two, mm -hmm. the two broken ribs. Yeah. That's so, shocked me today. Yeah. Somebody asked about this. Yeah, so and these are two, so this is a hat pattern by um, Marie Renier. She's a French designer. And this was the first sample that we worked together on. This could be a great project for people to dip their toes into mm -hmm. mixing bases together. Yeah, you're right. It, it's a hat, so it's yeah, smaller. Yeah, it's you're a hat. It's a smaller a project, but everybody yeah. needs a hat, especially I've learned today. It's really cool. It's, yeah, it was, what, 75 a couple of days ago, and today it's like 30, maybe. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and what's great is, like, you use two strands of different yarns here. So we use, like, a worsted, like, a worsted DK plus a fingering weight here, and then mm -hmm. you just... At, you continue with these two yarns and then you add a mohair silk ah, for the bottom that's rim oh, and it, your ears it keeps you. your ears warm and mm -hmm. acts as, it adds this extra dimension of fuzziness yes. right yeah. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's really great photos in the book of this one showing uh -huh. the, the contrast. And so we did the same thing here mm -hmm. as well. So this is featuring Amy's Peaches and Dreams mm -hmm. yes. here where we've like marled it through. Actually, maybe this is holographic dreams. In any case, you can take any kind of variegated. Mm -hmm. I yes. wanted to take a variegated fingering weight because we all mm -hmm. have that in our stash and you put it with like a neutral 
we use Wensley worsted. Mm -hmm. And then down here, we added the mohair silk mm -hmm. so that we can make that extra warm brim. Mm -hmm. So this would be a great project to dip your toe yeah. into mixing the bases. Definitely. That and makes you can a lot of sense. really see how like the choice of color of the mohair silk, whether it's something that blends together or contrasts. Right, right. Yeah, very like true. you can see mm -hmm. how like that, that moment so like really take changes the yeah. whole kind of like vibe of the project. Mm -hmm. That really is a great entry step pattern yeah. Yeah. into it. Very nice. Definitely, you know. definitely. And like leave the makers along, the flags, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can do it. And, and on the other hand, if you seen one of these and think, yes, I'm going to go full bore and do <laughs> Ain't nothing added. wrong with basically being like, I want this. Because yeah. also, as Amy said, you know, go stash diving. I mean, right. you've been collecting these things for a while, especially if you do have a palette. Uh, yeah. you know, you've, you've got a whole, as many people do. I mean, we talk to people every day. It's oh, yeah. I always knit the blue sweater. Forever. And I mean, I always, I have like a ton of stuff, you know, of like onesie twosies and mm -hmm. like fingering weight mm -hmm. or. Yeah, that you kind of not get. Exactly. When you walk exactly. Store, you're like, yeah. I have to have this. From wool walks yes. or yarn crawls or just, you know, especially when Traveling. I travel. Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. Get I always get souvenir yarn, right? Yeah. I always get something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is such a great way mm -hmm. to kind of experiment with things. But honestly, I always get fingering, and this is inspiring me to get lace weight, to start picking up mm -hmm. yes. lace weight stains. Well, right? do you think you could use <laughs> no. maybe like one or two of them could be fingering and yes, drop out two lace? Yes, absolutely. So could, there's yeah, eight strands of way. lace weight, but you could take two of those lace weights and replace it with, with fingering. With more fingering, yeah. And really play around with the textures. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really, it's all about just, just trying to pull that together to get that gauge. It's yeah. like having a giant cradle Plus, of box. And just I going love down, right, and doing, the inside yeah, with yeah, the floats, cool. just so. Mm -hmm. It it's creates like extra stunning. warmth and just like, I don't know, makes perfect drape and there's no ends to weave in on this, guys. Don't, oh, wow. we, don't worry, but we just like mm -hmm. tied knots on the inside. Yeah, and so if you use yeah. a non, like a yeah, so if you use a non super wash yarn, it just like velcros itself right. inside mm -hmm. and you're done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> oh, so awesome. uh, one, one thing I guess I was thinking we might want to end with is that one of the things we've been so excited, you know, in addition to knowing Amy was coming here, is that we have a custom color coming. Yay! Oh, we do! <laughs> we do. Um, so it's not here yet. It's going to be here for Wool Walk, which yeah. is the very end of April into May. So, um, you know, we're, we're thrilled and it's it's nice. We're going to continue to live the Amy happiness for the next <laughs> right. few months, for <laughs> exactly. sure. Exactly. It's, it's a cute color. I really love developing this one and it would be super perfect for this hat. Oh, right? yes. oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Definitely. And another Ooh. thing we talked about maybe was Hoagie's Elton sweater that yes. that could be cool. Yes. So we'll we'll make some kits up when yeah. when it, yeah. we get yeah. it in. And we'll have suggestions. And you certainly will hear more about it when it's here. Oh. But I, I feel oh. like we had to mention it now. Okay. Because yeah. we're you'll hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're not quiet. <laughs> Never ever. Never ever. <laughs> So, well, yeah. thank you so much for, for coming, and thank you so much for taking the time to podcast with us no and problem. be our guest, and we hope that you come back soon. It's only a 40 minute train from New York now. That's right, now we know, know that the whole right? train situation, like, yeah, just, like, even if you're staying in New York, you can just, come for a day. Yeah. 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 So we will we will plan that when, when the time is right. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.